Hello, everyone. I'm Xin Yu Zhang. I'm going to present our recent work on six-seeker software radio platform. This work was done entirely at the University of Wisconsin Madison. The 60 gigahertz spectrum band is getting a lot of attention recently. We used to talk a lot about the spectrum scarcity on the microwave band where Wi-Fi and LTE are located. But on the 60 gigahertz band, it seems the problem is almost gone, especially after FCC's recent regulation update, which released about 14 gigahertz of spectrum band for unlicensed use. This creates a huge playground for wireless research. Right now, commercial products that use 60 gigahertz spectrum already exist, and they can create the so-called cordless computing applications, which replace the Ethernet cable and monitor cable using a multi gigabit BPS 60 gigahertz link. Industry joints such as Google, Facebook, and uh, AT&T all released projects that use 60 gigahertz spectrum to realize multiple gigabit BPS of small cell networks wireless backhaul, or wireless mesh networks. From the microwave band to the millimeter wave band, it is not just a simple switch of spectrum. There are a lot of new challenges and applications for us to reinvestigate. Specifically, at the 60 gigahertz spectrum, the signals suffer a lot from attenuation loss, about 1,000 times more attenuation loss compared with the 2.4 gigahertz. As a result, we often have to rely on highly directional, uh, electronically steerable phase array antennas to overcome the attenuation loss. But this actually introduces some more problem. The transmitter and the receiver have to be constantly aligned with each other, and uh, human body blockage often cause the link to be broken. On the other hand, such sensitivity to human activities also creates new opportunities for human activity sensing. For example, recent work has shown the feasibility of tracking finger gesture, recognizing objects, as well as tracking objects with millimeter level precision. To explore a broader range of applications and the new network protocols in this domain, ideally, we would like to have a flexible experimental platform that allows us to access the uh, millimeter wave network from the physical layer up to the application layers, and that can provide us real-time ch channel sensing capability with gigahertz of channel resolution. On the microwave band, we have seen quite a few pioneering software radio platforms, such as USRP, WAP, and Sora, which changed the landscape, landscape, landscape of wireless research in the past one decade. But on the millimeter wave band at 60 gigahertz, it's almost an empty space. OpenMilli is designed to fill this gap. You can think about OpenMilli as a programmable wireless platform that allows us to implement any kind of signal processing, communication, or networking algorithms running at the 60 gigahertz spectrum. You can also think about it as a programmable 60 gigahertz radar to support wireless sensing applications. When we designed this platform, we kept two key features in mind that represent the unique characteristics of the 60 gigahertz radios. First of all, OpenMilli is a wideband software radio with about one giga sample per second of sampling rate or one gigahertz of effective bandwidth. Second, it has a programmable, electronically steerable phase array antenna, which is unique to 60 gigahertz radios. OpenMilli has five major modules. The PC host, FPGA platform, data converters, ADC and DAC, RF front end, as well as the phase array antenna. To send the signals, we can define the digital waveform in either the PC host or the FPGA. These signals will be converted into analog forms using the DAC data converter. And then the baseband signals will be upconverted using this RF front end. And then the signals will be emitted through the phase array antenna. The receiver path will follow reverse direction. 
To make this platform widely available and accessible to more researchers, we intentionally built everything from commercial off-the-shelf components. The RF front end that we use is a commercial 60 gigahertz frequency converter. It has the waveguide module, WR15 waveguide module, which allows us to attach the RF front end to standard millimeter wave antennas. The receiver module is from the same platform called PM003. This picture shows the RS, RX module attached to our phased array antenna here. The baseband processing unit comprises one FPGA platform, the Xilinx UltraScale KCU105 platform, attached to data converters, ADC and DAC. This data converter is the analog devices DAC2 platform, which has one giga sample per second of effectively, effective sample rate. One caveat here about the DAC is that it usually converts digital waveforms into analog waveforms, but the analog waveform has very limited resolution. It looks like staircases. So the effective bandwidth used to be only 500 megahertz. So we used a simple oversampling trick to improve the effective bandwidth to one gigahertz. Phase noise is a huge problem for high frequency radios. Phase noise comes from the uh, instability of the low rate clock that is driving the RF front end. This picture shows the phase noise result that we got. We are actually just sending one single sign tone, but after receiving the signal, the sign tone becomes a wideband signal. This is just because of phase noise, and this will prevent us from any kind of phase-based modulation and the channel sensing algorithms. To tackle this issue, we figured out a solution. That is, we use a high-precision external clock to drive the transmitter and the receiver so that we can purify the waveform and uh, minimize the phase noise. And this picture shows what happens after we have the clock. Now the phase noise is almost gone, and we see a single spike when we send a single sign tone signal across the frequency domain. One important challenge and uh, most the most time-consuming part of OpenMILI is to design the hardware interfaces so that we can put all these heterogeneous hardware modules together and make them work at one giga sample per second sampling rate. To that end, between the PC host and the FPGA platform, we designed a customized PCIe Generation 3 interface that allows us to stream the data samples at 48 gigabps of digital throughput. We need this digital throughput mainly because in order to stream samples at one giga sample per second speed, each sample taking 16 bits, then we will need about 32 gigabps of throughput between any of these hardware modules. Between the FPGA and the DAC2 platform, the data converter, we designed a customized high-speed network protocol uh, following the JESD 204B standard. And then this allowed us to achieve a digital throughput of 40 gigabps, which is still beyond the requirement of 32 gigabps. Between the data converters and the RF front end, we added customized attenuators, transformers, as well as analog filters to meet the voltage match requirement and the signal match requirement between these two modules. The most unique component in OpenMILI is a programmable phased array antenna. We designed this antenna following a tree structure as shown in the figure. The RF signals running at 60 gigahertz will come from the waveguide, go through the root of the tree, which is a waveguide to microstrip transition interface. I'll talk about it later. The signals will eventually end at the leaves, which are four antenna elements, patch antenna elements. After going through the route, all the signals will be branched using a Wilkinson power divider, and then we will have four branches corresponding to the four leaves. Within each branch, we have a phase shift circuit, which is creating the phase array codebook. This phase shifting is realized using a 60 hertz antenna switch, which reroutes the signals across two different paths, and those two different paths will have different path lengths, 
or different delay or a different phase, which gives us the phase shifting effect. Right now, we built a phase array antenna with four elements, but because of the tree structure, we can easily scale, scale it to a larger number of antenna elements and larger number of code, uh, larger number of code book entries. This is how the phase array looks like after the fabrication. Most of, of the wires that we see here are on the order of micrometers. And uh, the phase switches are placed here on top of the patch antenna circuit using some gold wire bonding structures. And the digital control parts of the uh, phase switches are routed to the back of the antenna through rear holes. And eventually all those wires, eight of them, will go to this phase array controller, which is managed by the FPGA platform and allows us to switch between different beam directions or beam patterns. Right now, our platform, because of the symmetric structure that we have here, it only has eight effective beam directions or beam patterns, and five of them are unique. But again, we can expand this tree structure to have more antenna elements and a larger codebook size. Another problem that we encountered is the transition circuit. The waveguide that I showed is a standard interface for connecting to hall antennas, but the patch antenna is like a piece of paper, so we need to make the transition while ensuring that the signals are still resonating at 60 gigahertz with minimal loss. So we built this multi-layer structure to achieve that end. We have to be very careful about the geometry, dielectric property, and uh, other properties of each layer of this circuit and uh, ensure that the signals still run at 60 gigahertz without much loss. We have also designed an aluminum fixture that allows us to put the patch antenna tightly on the waveguide module so that we don't have any air gap, which may translate into signal loss as well. To make the entire platform run at one giga sample per second, the software framework is as important as the hardware interfaces. To make a usable, easily accessible software framework, we made two design choices. First of all, to implement each signal processing block, we use C++ to de define the signal processing tasks and use HLS, or high-level synthesis, to automatically translate, H translate the C++ into low-level FPGA code. Second, we use AXI, or Advanced Extensible Interface, a standard interface for connecting FPGA signal, block, signal blocks to modularize the entire design so that we don't have to worry much about how to connect the different signal blocks. Many software designers are worried about uh, the FPGA programming, but right now, HLS has evolved so much in the past few years that right now we can almost implement signal processing algorithms on FPGA in the same way that we do in typical C++, uh, C++ based platforms like GNU Radio. Another advantage of HLS is that we can automate the signal parallelization so that we can achieve giga sample per second of signal processing speed on the FPGA platform, which is usually only driven by several hundred megahertz of clock. On the other hand, across different blocks, when we use AXI, it modularizes the design so that we don't have to worry too much about the rate matching and timing matching between different blocks, and we can easily add or delete signal processing modules very easily. This also used to be a headache for software engineers, but right now, because of the modularized interface, life will become much easier. We have also designed the customized PCIe Generation 3 interface between the PC host and the FPGA with 48 gigabps of digital throughput so that we can stream digital samples to the memory of the PC host and process everything in the PC host memory. And we can log the channel traces in real time with gigahertz of resolution. Consider that most of the software radio applications are either in cross-layer wireless design or in wireless sensing applications. We de define the two reference designs in our software framework. The first one is a gigahertz communication protocol, roughly following the Ethernet AD standard with gigabps of communication speed 
using OFDM based modulation. The second reference design is a, giga, is a gigahertz channel sensing reference design, allowing us to get the channel state information in real time with one gigahertz of bandwidth. A final note about available software radios running at millimeter wave band. About two years ago, we built the first 60 hertz software radio platform called WIMI. That platform is the narrow band software radio platform with about 245 megahertz of spectrum band. This year, NI, or National Instruments, announced a 70 gigahertz software radio platform, but it costs about 200K dollars. Open Mini is almost as powerful as the NI platform, and it has a phase array antenna, which is electronically steerable. And its cost is about 10 times lower compared with the NI platform. Majority of the cost in Open Mini actually comes from the RF front end, which has a monopoly price because only one company right now is selling this uh, RF front end. But this is going to change in two months. Right now, we are developing a customized R front end, which is going to replace this R front end with about half of the price. So as a result, we can reduce the entire platform price from about 20K to 15K or even 10K. But if you are eager to build your own platform following our description, then you can just go to our project website, buy everything, and run our software to assemble everything. We have made everything open source, as we promised in the paper, and we hope more and more people can participate in enriching this software repository and uh, making the vision of millimeter wave communication and sensing closer to us. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>